Welcome to the Creating a Project tutorial. What I'm going to do in this tutorial is take you through the steps of launching the software for the first time. So if you're a Mac user, you would go to Finder, Applications, then scroll down until you see Toon Boom Animate Pro 2, then double click on the Animate Pro icon. If you're a Windows user, from the startup menu, you'd go to Program Files, Toon Boom Animation, Animate Pro 2, and then just follow the paths until the end. So here we have the license agreement, which we're going to accept after uh, reading it very thoroughly, of course. So let's accept that. And then we get the preference style window. Basically what this window is asking you is which shortcut style you would like to work in. And this really depends on what you're used to working in. If you use Flash a lot or other Adobe products, you might want to say yes to this configuration. However, if you're used to working in Studio or other Toon Boom products, you might want to say no. What's good to know is that the choice that you make here is not set in stone. And as you'll see in a later tutorial, you'll have the option of changing your shortcut style, as well as the option of customizing the shortcuts to any of the commands or tools within the software. So I'm going to say yes here mainly because the user guide written for this software was done using the Adobe Flash style workflow. And you know, if you're following along with the user guide, um, it's nice to have all the shortcuts match up. So this we might not want to see again at startup. We'll just close that. And here we have the Animate Pro 2 welcome screen. This welcome screen has several different sections, all of which I'm going to talk about. Um, but I'm going to start here with the new scene section. You might be asking yourself, what's a scene? Well, this project file that you're about to create is a scene. Uh, the reason we call it a scene is because unlike uh, some other software programs where you might lay out the entire animation on one timeline, we really recommend that you start a new project file for each scene in the animation. Also, if you're using one of our storyboarding softwares to create a layout for your animation and then decide you'd like to import it into Animate Pro 2 as a sort of framework for your animation, the scenes will automatically get divided into different files. So the first thing to consider for your new scene is where you'd like to save it on your computer. You do this by clicking on the Choose button and then browsing for a good location. I myself like to create a new folder with the name of the animation as a place where I can save all the scenes of that animation. Next, you have to create a name for your project, and I'm going to call it creating a project uh, after the name of this tutorial. And then you have to select a resolution for your project. Here we have listed all the most common resolutions used in the industry when producing an animation. We have the name of the resolution listed here alongside its width and height in pixels, the frames per second, and the aspect ratio. If you decide you'd like to do something a little different, say create a custom resolution, all you need to do is click on the plus sign here at the bottom. You can't have two resolutions with the same name, so you're going to have to give a name to your custom resolution. I'm going to call it my resolution. Oops. And then you can change its width and height in pixels to something uh, maybe bizarre like a square. And the frame rate. If for some reason later on you decide that you'd like to remove this custom resolution from your resolution list, it's cluttering it up or whatever, all you have to do is select it and then click on the minus sign here at the bottom. One thing that's good to note is that the scene resolution that you choose here is changeable. So you can be halfway through your animation and then decide to change your scene's resolution from within the scene. Obviously this is rec not recommended, but it is possible. The next section we have is the recent scenes section. Because this is the first time that you're launching the software, you don't have anything listed here. But usually you'll see a list of the projects that you worked on most recently as a link. And if you click on this link, it'll automatically open the scene without you having to browse through uh, different directories to find your scene. 
At the bottom here we have the open the scene link. You can click on this to open a scene that you know exists but that you haven't worked on it in a while. And I'd like to actually open one of these scenes to show you the structure of an Animate Pro 2 file. If you're not familiar with Toon Boom products, you, ha you should know that the name of your scene is often seen on a folder like this, but that inside is your actual scene file. It's the TBUP file. So you don't have to worry about all these other folders and files within the main folder structure but it's good to know that you can't separate them. So if you decide to move the location of your scene, you have to move this entire folder, the entire root folder. You can't just move the TBUP file. The last section we have here is the documentation section, and this is where you can get access to videos created by Toon Boom, as well as all the user guides created for Animate Pro 2 simply by clicking on these links. And the documentation is something I'm going to get into real soon. So now that we've created uh, and selected all of our settings for our scene, we're going to click on the Create button. So now I'd like to talk to you about a few things that we saw in the welcome screen, but that are also accessible from directly within your scene. The first being the help documentation. You can access this by clicking on the help menu at the top of the software, then by selecting the menu item help, or by clicking on the keyboard shortcut F1. What this does is launch your default document reader. I know in a Mac it is not Adobe Acrobat, but in this case it's very important to use and install Adobe Acrobat so that you can see these PDFs in the structure that they were meant to be seen. So as you can see on the side here, there are several help guides um, in the form of searchable PDFs. Uh, we have a utilities guide, a scripting guide, and the user guide, which I'm going to go into right now. And you can see that you can search through the user guide by either clicking on the chapter heading, uh, any of the subheadings within the chapter if you know specifically what you're looking for. You can do a keyword search. Or you can use uh, the table of contents also by clicking on one of the headings inside the contents list. So as you can see, it's fairly easy to do a quick search within the document to find answers uh, to any of the problems that you're having while using the software. The next things I'd like to talk to you about are how you're able to create a new document or open an existing document um, in various ways in the software. The first being the two icons at the top uh, left hand corner. The first is to create, the second is to open, um, but also by going into the file menu. Uh, you can see the commands new or open, or you could use the keyboard shortcuts uh, command N for new. Uh, in uh, On a PC I believe it's control N. You'll see a smaller version of what you saw on the welcome screen to create a new scene, just the essentials, where you would keep it, uh, your project name and your project resolution. Or you can use the keyboard shortcut Command O. It'll ask you before opening a new scene if you'd like to save the current one. Um, in this case, I'm not going to save it. And then it'll allow you to browse through your computer again to search for an existing file. Um, and I believe in a PC, the keyboard shortcut is Control N. So I believe that wraps it up for the Creating a Project tutorial. Stick around for our next installment, Setting Up Your Project.